We begin our coverage of Conference USA Football Media Days. I'm Ron Fulin. Good to have you with us. We'll be talking to, as mentioned, all the coaches throughout today. Our first school up is Charlotte with our head coach joining us down the far side there, Brad Lambert. Also, good to have you here, Coach. Good to be here, Ron. Also joining us, Larry Ogunjobi, defensive lineman, was All-Conference all USA last season. And NFL.com had the 16 people that could run for president. He's one of them, Jamal Covington, offensive lineman. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Thank you, Brad, I want to start with you. We'll, we'll get to you players in a second. You said last year was eye-opening and that the players are going to use that as motivation this season. Yeah, I think so. I think our guys got an introduction to the league, and, you know, it's such a, such a balanced, good conference all across the board, and I think our guys really got a good feel for the league going through it, and we were in a lot of games, and so we're encouraged. Uh, we got a lot of guys back. Uh, you know, we got a senior-laden team, so I expect, you know, for our guys to come out and play extremely well. Talk about the fact that this is the final year for the players who actually started this program. I think there's like 20, 22 players back. How special is this for them? Yeah, this is uh, this group is really special to me personally just because they took a risk on us when we didn't have anything. Uh, we didn't have a football. We didn't have a stadium. And they, they're risk takers, and you're, two of them are sitting here with us. And so it's a special group, and you want uh, you want them to go out and have a, have a great senior year because it's a, it's a really special group, and we just appreciate them coming to Charlotte. When you and I talked last year, at the Conference USA meetings, you told me that you had to out-recruit the previous class, but you had to be careful when doing that. Explain that, and are you still in that situation now? Yeah, you're always trying to elevate your recruiting, and, and once we put Conference USA, their, the brand behind our brand, you know, everything elevated, and we've we've done that every year. We've, uh, you know, elevated our recruiting and brought in the right student athletes, and, and we want to do that each and every year, and, and, you know, now it's time for us to go produce on the field, and and win some games in the league and, and show that uh, we belong in the league. The one thing that uh, stands out is, is you've got a great pedigree as a, as a coach. You were at Kansas State, but the man that has meant a lot to a lot of us in this business who's been very upfront with us and has meant a lot to you, Jim Grobe, what did he teach you about coaching? Well, I think for Coach Grobe's number one thing is developing relationships with people in the building, players, coaches, uh, whoever's in the building, and, and he treated everybody you know the same and so that's the one thing that I always took from him you know you treat people the right way on a daily basis and and motivate people develop a relationship with them and and that'll take you a long way and that's that's how we won a lot of games at Wake Forest so we've tried to do that at Charlotte second season in Conference USA your impression of the first season as far as what did you learn and what do you need to do to make second season better than the first? Well, I think, you know, the first time going through Conference USA, I told our team all the time, the difference is the line of scrimmage. You know, everybody's got a great defensive lineman you're trying to block. And so I think the guys got to see that firsthand, you know, last year. And, and so we had, like I said earlier, we had an opportunity to win some games and we didn't close them out at the end. So that's our focus this year is finishing and making sure that we go in and and uh, you know, take care of the, the little things that, that it takes to win games. Offense, you were pretty balanced last season, and I think in the offseason you wanted to build depth on the offensive line. Was that accomplished? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, we lost uh, Jamal last year for a few games, and, and we lost Eugene German for a few games, and so we had to, you know, we have to develop that depth, and each year that's gotten better for us as we grow our program. Um, you know, we've brought in some good players and good students, and so um, they've they've developed that you know trying to develop that depth in the offensive line has been critical for us. I think we've done that. Last year, three quarterbacks used. Give us an update, <laughs> and, that, and that's not an ideal situation, obviously, because of injuries and everything else and style. <laughs> Give us an update on your quarterback situation. Well, Kevin Olson's going to be our quarterback. He won the job coming out of spring and, and going into the fall. And Hassan Clues, uh, our backup quarterback right now. So really excited about Kevin. He's a he's a good player. He's a good person. He's adopted well to our team. Um, and he's just come in and, and done a good job with our guys. And so we're excited to watch him play this year. And, of course, his brother plays in the NFL, Carolina Panthers, Greg Olson. He little does. little pedigree there. He does. Uh, so it's kind of a, an Olson family uh, in <laughs> Charlotte. So it's been good. That's good. Let's let's talk about the defense now. And and Larry, I'm going to talk to you first. What did you learn last season about Conference USA, and what you had to do to get better to compete this year? Um, I think the biggest thing is just like Coach said, finishing. I feel like we're competing at a decent level, especially on the D line. But I feel like it's just that consistency throughout the game. Not starting late, but starting as soon as the ball snaps. As far as like not waiting for the second half to come out and start playing, but starting from the beginning and holding that throughout the entire game. Now last year, uh, Coach Wallerstadt, the defensive coordinator for Charlotte, he put a lot more movement in, 
And I got the sense that you guys like that movement on defense. Yes, sir. I think it, it just helps a lot because it allows you to utilize your skills. And for us, our biggest thing is our speed. So just being able to move around and get past blocks and stuff like that, it helped a lot. And when you got to know the defense a little bit better, did you play more aggressively and play, as coaches like to say, faster? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. How much fun was that for you? Too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> this year's defense. Guys have had to work hard, obviously, getting stronger, faster, and everything else that goes along with it. How much time watching tape have you put into it to try to get better on the mental aspect of the game? I think, to be honest, I think 90% of football is mental. You have to, you know, set yourself up for success through the film room and being able to hone in on what you need to work on. So I feel like just being able to go in the film room every day and really see the things that you need to work on, see how your opponent's acting, and just be able to, you know, go off his or uh, Whatever they got going on, I feel like that's the biggest thing. Let's talk to Jamal Covington now, talk a little bit of offense. When you heard that NFL.com said you were one of the 16 players that could run for president, <laughs> besides all your teammates giving you a rations of grief, obviously, what did you think about that? Uh, I think it was a tremendous honor not only to represent uh, uh, my family, but uh, this logo, the 49ers logo, is just uh, something I really try to do is be a high man of character, a high man of integrity, and just a uh, really have something positive going on for our program. It was a tremendous opportunity and a, a tremendous be blessing to be uh, selected for that. Any aspirations in that area? Uh, yes, that's something I'm definitely trying to do in the future. I feel like, uh, God willing, if that opportunity were to come, I'd definitely uh, put myself in the best position to achieve that goal. So. Well, just in case I brought my resume, and I'm going <laughs> to give it to you right there. <laughs> um, you missed four games. Coach mentioned that. You missed some, some playing time. How frustrating was that for you last season? Uh, it was extremely frustrating, uh, especially like we are just putting in a lot of work in the off season and just really trying to prepare for that. But uh, during that whole process, I really sat back and I utilized that time to really uh, help out our team, help out my teammates, uh, really get in the film room, uh, honing in on certain guys and certain guys on our team, helping them out what they need to work on, just really being a team player and uh, using my gifts, everything. Uh, that I could do on my end to put our team in the best position to be successful. I want both of you to answer, Brad, and, and you also. Last year, when you look at it, sacks, I don't want to put it all on the <laughs> offensive linemen. They seem to be an Achilles heel for you. Was that more of talent, or was it just break down? Break that down for me as far as your Well, I think it was a combination of things. Obviously, you stepped up in competition, so there's an adjustment period there, as I said earlier, of everybody's got a good three technique or a defensive end you're mm -hmm. trying to block. So that was a, a combination of it. Uh, the fact that we lost two tackles through, throughout that season, uh, that was a piece of it. And our quarterbacks didn't play as well as we wanted them to play as well, so they hold the ball a little too long. Uh, wide outs. It, it was a full team effort. It wasn't just one position and and obviously the quarterback always takes a lot of blame but I just I think the step up in competition with the people we're trying to block and then you know getting some guys banged up that really affected us. I think a lot of people have the misnomer that it goes all on the offensive lineman but as you mentioned there are different uh, aspects to all of this and you got to keep everybody positive because that is a fixable thing is it not? Yeah no question uh, I mean that's that's something that you're always striving to do and and uh, make sure we're getting the ball out on time, making sure running backs are blocking, make sure we're running the ball well. You know, we want to. We always want to start with being able to run the ball, so that affects your throwing game. And and uh, so we just we need to improve as a whole unit in that area, and and that's been something in the off season that we're we're really working hard on. And Jamal, did you take it personally? Take the it. sacks. You know, giving up the sacks. Not you yourself giving up sacks, because you have never given up a sack. Uh, <laughs> told you I'd kiss up to you. Uh, but does the line take that personally? Oh, definitely. We take it personally because we are a unit, and that's something we always try to do is really hold each other accountable to a higher standard. And uh, giving up sacks is unacceptable in our eyes and our coaches' eyes. And uh, just really, every, every time something negative goes on, uh, Coach Mullen harps on all the time. We want to have a next play mentality, mm -hmm. especially during the game. Is uh, have a have that have that uh, short mindset. Okay, it happened. We got to keep moving forward. We run a, we run a really fast offense. So that's something that we really try to try to really focus in on during the game is not get too hung up on one play and just have that next play mentality. So going back and looking at tape from last year, Brad, the one thing that stood out to me, I thought you had very solid pass defense last season. 
What was the area, though, that you said we have to get better at X and Y on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I think the number one thing for us defensively is we got to eliminate the big plays. We gave up too many big plays last year, and, and we want to make sure that we're, we're sound in our gap control and we don't give up as many big plays. We created more turnovers and we created a lot more lost yardage plays, which was attributed to the more aggressive style that we played that Larry alluded to mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, and we want to continue that trend and create lost yardage plays and put offenses behind the chains. But we do have to we do have to eliminate the big plays in the game. You know, you just you know gifts in a game or big plays can really hurt you. Now you have an outstanding safety already there. Is there a concern for the other safety position, and have you filled that yet? Yeah, we're always looking, uh, you know, to, to get those positions, add depth in all of our, our positions. Alex Duncan had a good spring. A.J. McDonald had a really good spring. So I look for those guys to, you know, they're, they're new in our program and, and be an impact for us as we move forward. We are talking about the linebackers, and, and I mentioned to you, I said, are the linebackers making progress? And you mentioned a couple of names. Talk about those names at linebacker. Yeah, I think uh, Carrington King's really evolved into a good player. He's a guy that starts for us. Nick Cook led us in tackles last year. Uh, he's back and then uh, Justin Bridges Thompson JBT uh, he really had a nice spring he was forced to play a lot because of some injuries throughout the spring which he really elevated his game I was really excited about him coming out of spring and going in here into the summer in August so hopefully he'll add some some playmaking depth and then at outside backer Daquan Lucas is just a real impact player mm -hmm. for us uh, he's a guy that's created a lot of y lost yardage plays extremely fast. He's one of, if not the fastest player on our defense in playing outside linebacker. So we expect another big year out of him. You know, as, as we're getting ready to, to begin this little discussion, all three of them were talking. I asked, when do you start practice? And all three of them, their eyes lit up. You're only less than a week, a week and a half away for you. It can't come soon enough, I would take it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Just would really want to get this uh, football season up to a great start, ready to get to work. How about you, Larry? I can't wait. <laughs> I just can't wait. I'm ready to go because I didn't practice during the spring, so I'm just really excited to just get it back out there. And, you know, last last football season in college is just it's a blessing, man, so I'm, I'm excited. And, Brad, for you, I know coaches, they don't really have off time. Are you at the point now you're making sure all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted getting oh, into it? No question. You're trying to make sure all the, the logistics are in line. But, uh, you know, for these two guys and for this class, there's been a ton, a ton of firsts. And now they're going through the last. Uh, so it's the last two days they'll go through the last. So it's, it's, uh, this is a really special one for me going in uh, because of this class and this group and, and what we're trying to get done as we move forward and only in year four of, of college football. So it's, uh, it's going to be a, it's, couldn't get here soon enough for us. Gentlemen, outstanding job. Brad, I wish you guys the best of luck this year. Stay healthy, gentlemen. Yes, Thank sir. you, Ron. We'll yes, be sir. back with more from Conference USA Media Days up next, Louisiana Tech.